Hi guys, we'll just give people a couple of minutes to join us. Um, have a notepad ready um, and obviously have a pen ready. I hope you can see the board all right. For those that have already joined us, I hope um, you are staying on top of your English work and top of your revision. Um, if you're in year nine, obviously just getting a head start on reading the text. If you're in year 10, then you absolutely should be staying on top of everything. Um, divide your time wisely between the texts that you, you know you're studying and obviously the poems. There's little things you can be doing. Um, for instance, if you wake up one day and you don't have the motivation, which is easy to do when we're stuck in the house, just do something quick, as long as you're just staying on top um, of things. And I suppose the beauty with English is that there's always something to do, whether it be language or literature. So always just keep on top of everything so that what you don't want to do is go back to school in September and think, oh my God, I've forgotten Lady Macbeth. I haven't got a clue what's going on in that text and I don't know the poems. We'll start um, in a few minutes. Right, okay, we'll get on. Um, the first thing I'll say is that this is how I uh, teach uh, the creative writing section. So obviously you have um, expert teachers telling you their way. So um, just use your brain wisely in terms of advice. I'm going to give you my tips. I'm going to give you what I um, tend to tell my, my grade six to nines to do. Um, and again, it's perfect for you in terms of experimenting. You've got all of this time to experiment. You can be emailing your work to your teachers or however you're contacting them. And they can tell you, actually, do you know what scrap Stacey's idea uh, and or actually, do you know what that works? Um, in terms of quick tips for creative writing, the one of the easiest things to do, and it sounds ridiculous, is to use a cyclical link. So um, in some way... How can you mirror image or match or link or juxtapose your opening and your ending? It actually can be something very simple. Um, for the grade nines, obviously, it's going to be something a little bit more complex, but it can be something like repetition of your opening line. It can be a juxtaposition of your opening line. Um, it can kind of metaphorically mirror image your opening line. Don't stay with me. I will show you examples. So, for instance... Um, I put a picture on yesterday for my year 10s, which was a volcano, and that was the descriptive writing that they had to do. So if we can imagine that my opening sentence was something along the lines of um, the volcano opened, uh, releasing infection upon the earth, okay? Now, you've already got your language device there. Now, if this was the end, we need to think about, obviously, how our writing has developed in terms of mirroring that and or what we can do. So I'm going to talk about the volcano opened, releasing infection. You could say the volcano closed. Yeah, or, or you could, again, actually solidify that and say, um, upon, upon this opening, the infection had ruined Earth. And you've got that wonderful like, conclusion, but also linked to the opening. So again, your first sentence and your last sentence, if they are in some way linked, the examiner loves it because it's it's like a structural device, isn't it? Uh, for those students who are watching and who, who are perhaps not a grade six to nine and are thinking, oh my God, what will I do? You can do things like the single word. Do you know what I mean? So if you start your um, your creative writing um, with freedom, then what could you put at the end? Could you talk about um, entrapment? So obviously it's got that, that juxtaposition or would you just kind of repeat uh, freedom as a single word or, or within the phrase? Um, one, of the, one of the better openings and it, it sounds like cheating, but it's for those students who panic in exams. So we've all been there. You've got a blank sheet of paper and you think, oh my God, what am I going to do? What am I going to write? I can't start. Um, countless students will say, I'll put their hand up and say, I don't, I don't have a start. I don't have a start. So what I would, would urge is to, to have a start ready or to have a device that you're, you're always going to use. And one of the, I find one of the really powerful ones, and again, it's just personal preference, is the triple abstract noun and the colon. 
If you aren't good at that, just hold and I'll give you an option. But the triple abstract noun and the colon can do something like, I don't know, isolation, um, destruction, think of three abstract nouns, um, desolation. So you put your three abstract nouns, okay guys, then you put your colon there. So you immediately you start quite powerfully because your vocab, I would hope, would be decent. You've used a triple, and then you've got the colon in instantaneously. And then our sentence is going to come there. So actually, if we just use this, we would put that there. So you've got isolation, destruction, and uh, desolation. The volcano opened, releasing infection upon the earth. So what I will do with my students who are less than confident or who struggle to start is they will always start like that with the triple abstract noun in the colon. Now, whether or not you want to cheat and just steal those three is entirely up to you, but you can practice. If we are in this lockdown scenario, we have got all of this time to just be, just be practicing. Um, and I'm not saying go, go away and write 45 minute things every day. I'm saying just try a paragraph here, just try a paragraph there, and, and again, experiment. Um, the other thing, if again, if we just take a step down for those students that aren't perhaps a six to nine and, and if sitting there thinking, I haven't got a clue what abstract uh, noun is, what am I going to do? Then obviously you can just do your triple adjective. It still does the same job. So you could put something like, I don't know, cold, dark, airless, and then you're in, do you know what I mean? And, and it's still a language device. I always say to my students, um, the examiner should be ticking all of your work for device, for content, for idea, for um, sentences, for punctuation. And the longer they go without ticking, we well, just absolute waste and time. And to me, if there's if if, if it's not littered with ticks and, and things that they can give you credit for, then it's waffle. It's just pure boring waffle, unfortunately. Um. So we've got the triple abstract noun in the colon. We've got our cyclical link. If you aren't as good with the abstract, uh, the abstract noun, you can obviously uh, use an adjective. Again, if you want to take a step down, so if there's anybody watching who's thinking, do you know what, this woman's nuts, I'm only a grade four, then we can use a double adjective. So that's just two. Now, the students that are a grade nine and are going to use this, still listen, because obviously later in your work, you can use a double adjective. Um, so again, you, you just put your two adjectives at the start of the sentence, so I don't know. If we're going along the theme of the volcano, we can do something like intimidating and um, cruel comma and then you're in and again we're going to get marked on our sentences and we're going to get marked on hopefully if your vocabulary is good and then obviously what follows that so again we're always um like manipulating the reader so that they get what we want from our description I'll swipe this i'm not high tech i don't have a um a cloth um so Triple abstract noun, or you've got your double adjective, the single word sentence is, is always quite good, depending on where you place it and what you want um, the reader to, to, or how you want the reader to react to that. So again, consider that. Um, paragraphing, really quickly, um, I, I'm always astounded at how many students say, but I don't know when I should be starting a new paragraph. Uh, please just use your common sense with paragraphs, really. And in creative writing, it is manipulation of the reader. So put your paragraphing where is best? And I always say to my students, consciously consider how you start a paragraph and how you finish it. Yeah, the start and the end, because the last thing we read, we remember. The first thing we read dictates um, how interested we are and what you're describing. Um, you can also, guys, start a sentence with a simile. So you can start with the word like, so you forefront um, your complex sentence with the comparison. So again, I don't know if, if we're just going along the, the idea that we've got the image of a volcano and it's on my Instagram if you want it, or just Google one. We might put something like, um, like the wrath of Zeus, because I do like the Greek gods, which I'll explain in a minute. And then our sentence follows. So again, we've got language device and we're in there. Again, for those students who are just taking a step back slightly, who are sitting there thinking, uh, what on earth am I going to do? I just use similes that aren't good enough. Then try and practice your simile writing. And if at worst, use a cliched simile. It's still a device. But try your best where you can to avoid cliches. And um, for those that don't know what a cliche is, obviously, it's just something that's overused. Now, Again, sorry to use this lockdown as an example, you have no excuse not to read something and get some ideas. So please don't please don't come at us as teachers with, I haven't got an idea, I don't have an idea, get one, because you've got all of this time to be reading. Um, I get most of my ideas actually from films and things like that, but that's just obviously my personal preference. Um, 
So we can do similarly as well. We can also do something very simple in terms of our grade four and our grade five, which is just a fronted adverbial. Your fronted adverbial still gets you that different start when you are being judged on your sentence writing, the structuring of your sentence. But my advice would be that we've got to make the adverb pretty decent. There's no point, guys, and please listen here, so don't turn off just yet, in putting quickly, comma, I ran away. Now, if, if there is any English teachers watching, we laugh because creative writing, there's always somebody running somewhere, or there's already always somebody sprinting somewhere, or there's always somebody tripping over. And yes, you have got that from these cliched horrors where they trip over because they're running through the woods. It's ridiculous. Okay, in your creative writing, I, nobody needs to be running anywhere at all, and nobody needs to be tripping over at all. So just Use caution with your fronted adverbial. Use a decent word apprehensively, anxiously. You know, practice your vocabulary. Perfect time again to do it in this situation that we are in. Um, use this situation to pr practice creative writing. So do something on a lockdown. Do something on quarantine. Um, I might put something together on, on that later. So you've got your fronted adverbial. You've also got your, your fronted verb. Careful with that one because a lot of students will actually just write nonsense when they put the verb at the front. Um, so just be careful. Um, quick win there would be contemplating. You know what I mean? So you can put contemplating the current situation, comma, Zeus decided that punishment was worthy. Do you know what I mean? So just consider what verb goes first and the arrangement of your uh, subordinate clause and your main clause. Um, the colon I mentioned earlier, if you can't use the colon at the start, use it later. Um, and the colon, okay, guys, you're probably thinking, why is she doing this? Um, I think has either been mistaught, and I might be wrong there, or students aren't understanding what we're seeing. For the colon to be effective, the section before the colon has to be a sentence, and then the section after it is what we want to be emphasised. Imagine you've got a highlighter. That's the part we want to highlight. We want the reader to think, oh, my God. Yeah, that, that moment, that real um, punch, if you like. But this bit has to be a sentence. Lots of students are just banging the colon in the middle of a sentence and it's just pure nonsense. So ensure that there is a sentence, the colon, and then obviously whatever is key. Whatever follows that colon, you, you have to use as something really influential within your creative writing. Okay? Um, if I'm talking too fast, somebody just let me know. Now, I'm going to go to how I teach my students now and... This is going to go one of two ways. You're either going to think, wonderful idea, or you're going to be really bored and switch off. And again, personal preference. Um, I teach either biblical links, okay? Now, I'm not saying you need to read the Bible, just stay with me. Or the Greek myth. Or just famous older, older tales, okay? And the reason I teach these is you can use them very well for metaphor. Um, my... Um, advice okay and again it's not stonewall is that if you are writing metaphorically from beginning to end so it's extended metaphor then you should depending on the metaphor you use be hitting quite a high band if the worst thing in my opinion depending on your english ability is to describe the picture literally because with the best will in the world us english teachers would struggle because you have had some dodgy pictures like the old man like the the woman on the bus so we've got to take that picture and we've got to we've got to come up with some sort of metaphor now i kind of cheat with my students if you like so when we're doing the bible okay the easiest biblical story to include is adam and eve right stay with me because you've got humanity you've got god we know we've got the serpent in there, okay? And you, the, the picture last year was the marketplace. So that is perfect metaphorical representation of Eve um, taking the forbidden fruit. And that will be outstanding extended metaphor. Every picture that you are given will have some link to humans. It will. Whether there is or isn't a human in that picture, it'll be atmosphere, it'll be environment, it'll be journey, it'll be something that is linked to us. So you're talking about the first man and the first woman on earth and you are talking about taking vocabulary from that story. So already we've got temptation because we know Eve is. We've got forbidden because we know that the fruit is. You can, you can come in with manipulation for the serpent. You can talk about Satan if you want. And then on a more basic level, we've got good versus evil, which is obviously God versus the devil. Um, now, if we're going across the Greek myth, and again, you will find all of this on, on my website if you subscribe um, or if you just look through my, my Instagram. I, again, urge Mike to use Zeus because Zeus is the god of the gods. So again, he, he is the most powerful one. But 
what has happened over the last two years is that I find that and this is personal choice and obviously English teachers watching all things she's an absolute loon but I find that the, the story of Pandora's box does everything for you now let me just really quickly tell you this story and then you will see how it does everything and students can start their writing with upon opening Pandora's box comma destruction uh, had arisen or whatever so for those of us that don't know but again it's on Instagram or just google it we need to go back to Prometheus now I'm not expecting you to remember this but so Prometheus decides I'm going to give you the very very shortened version that he is going to steal from Zeus because he wants to make man so he does so he steals okay and obviously Zeus is furious all right so we always betray the divine in these stories all right which is why we're always punished okay and he ties Prometheus to the mountain okay so Zeus ties Prometheus to the mountain and every day a bird comes along excuse my drawing and eats Prometheus's liver and then he is like kind of healed and it happens the next day so it's eternal punishment so there's your next vocab right and say our vocabulary list is building up now Zeus kind of wasn't happy with that and he thought you know what actually because they have been so horrific because they have defied me they have tried to be me um then I, I need to punish them a bit more so he makes this beautiful woman called Pandora okay um and we can't avoid temptation as we have learned from the bible so Pandora is this beautiful woman and he gives her curiosity okay and he gives her deception there's your next vocab the vocab's doing itself now Zeus then obviously gives Pandora the box all right and he says you can do what you want you don't go in the box very very similar to Eve do what you want but you don't need that apple um Pandora because he has given her curiosity obviously thinks you know I'm gonna to have to look what's in there you know I, I need to have a look right Hum, you know human you know what we're like so she opens the box all right and out comes disease poverty heartbreak all the horrendous things all right the sins it all is unleashed out of the box yeah and it hits us all every single man is affected by one of these now again i'm not asking you to get emotional here but if you consider your life we've probably all come across heartbreak disease poverty sin all of those things now pandora in her mass panic closes the box another problem for us because what what happens when she closes the box and she thinks everything's wonderful is that she traps hope inside i mean there's your metaphor already your metaphor there is that hope can never be released that we can never experience it okay so I have found, and again, it's personal choice, that this metaphor covers everything. So if you've got a picture of an old man, right? I mean, it's not going to happen because we've had it, but if you did have, then why can't he have been punished because of Pandora's behaviour? Or why can't he be Zeus? Um, again, the picture um, in the marketplace. I would have done Eve, but you can talk about Pandora's box because the opening of Pandora's box, obviously, you can talk about is it has led to all of the issues that mankind has faced. So it will bring in disease, it will bring in poverty, and it will bring in this extended metaphor where you can get in things like hope, curiosity, um, and then you can talk about man. Um, I do think one of the key words in, 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 in this, Sam silly, is mankind. Because again, if we're going down this route of God, the gods punishing us, or Pandora, then it's actually about humanity, um, our ignorance, our, our kind of um inability to follow rules isn't it okay so pandora's box is one for you I'll, i shall show you guys if you're um still there i shall show you how i would just do uh link that across to some creative writing in just a second if you stay with me um in terms of obviously other greek myths because there's lots of them icarus is a good one you know when icarus flies too close to 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 the sun and again you've got a metaphor in that already okay about kind of stooping too high if you like um zeus is the god of the gods so that will give you power so I'm, again we're talking about uh vocabulary you've got the word wrath yeah because zeus's wrath is felt because we we all kind of um are punished by it um you've obviously got other gods and you've got the greek creatures so again this is not a, a lesson in greek myth by any means although it might seem like one medusa is probably the easiest creature to do and then that's going to get your vocabulary in because that's going to give us envy okay because um medusa is 
is punished because the goddesses are jealous of her being beautiful, so they transform her into the Gorgon. So again, if you've got a picture of Stonehenge or if you've got a picture with stones in, then you've got Medusa's eyes, haven't you? And you've got this idea that she's got the serpent hair, so you, you get vocabulary like manipulative and sly and cunning and uh, serpent, like if, if you if you want to go down that kind of route. Um, in terms of uh, other Greek monsters, then obviously we've got the Minotaur, um, and we've got the Chimera and we've got the Hydra. The Hydra is a pr pretty good one as well because um, the Hydra is like a three-headed snake, if you like. I know you love me drawn. And when you chop off one of its heads, then, then a couple replace it. So actually, when we do English language paper two, question five, if we are writing about a problem, which we tend to be, then you can bring in the fact that it was mirroring the Hydra. So uh, just off the top of my head, if we're doing paper two, question five, and we're talking about social media, we can talk about how social media has become its own Hydra because the problems with social media just escalate. Um, again, th this is not a Greek myth. I'm going to move to writing in just a second. But your other gods, Neptune or Poseidon, um, the god of water. So we, we did have a picture to me not so long ago where there was a massive wave going over a train. And I think it would be wonderful if you could talk about that. That was, you know, Neptune or Poseidon, depending on whichever one you would use, kind of punishing us with, again, with, with their wrath because we have in some way defied them as well. Um, Zeus has a thunderbolt, if, that, if anybody's bothered about that. So if we've got a picture, again, for pathetic fallacy, it does itself. And um, Poseidon and Neptune carry the trident. So again, you can kind of bring that in. And all of these, if, if you, you know, if you think insensibly, are creative already because if we just give out a, vol a volcano, and again, I might be nasty about the teenagers in Britain here, and we say describe that, you can think, we're going to get the word hot, we're going to get the word lava, we're going to get the word running. You can almost pick what people are going to do because because obviously because you're teen teenagers it's hard to write creatively in 45 minutes so all of these things give you that edge and they give you that edge in the sense of if an examiner's reading all of these papers and they're thinking oh my god if i read about hot runny lava or anymore i'm you know i'm done in um you get that original that originality straight from it okay so if we imagine that we've got a volcano guys as our picture okay i'll just show you what i would do and then what you can do, if you want, is you can try and write a paragraph and send it to me via Instagram, um, email your teachers, or again, my email address is on Instagram as well. Um, so if we are talking about what I've said, all right, which is, let's go with Pandora's box, um, and, and, and let's try and talk about the punishment of that, and we're going to link it to the volcano, then what you could do is you can start with the simile. So I'm just going to give you a couple of options to deal with me. And if you practice and write it down, you could write like the opening of Pandora's box. So there's there's a simile, but it's going to come straight into metaphor. Okay, stay with me. Again, there's your subordinate clause as well for structure and forefront in your sentence. Like the opening of Pandora's box, the volcano unleashed destruction. Okay, so straight away, right, we've got a decent, we've got a decent idea. Right, let's play examiner. We've got a subordinate clause, we've got a simile, we've got a metaphor, vocabulary's all right. Yeah, we'll get we'll kind of we'll kind of hitting something decent there. We haven't got oh there was hot, hot runny lava, so I ran away and I tripped our in the process of running away. Um so we're gonna follow this up. So our extended metaphor is obviously gonna be Pandora's box, all right? So like the opening of Pandora's box, the volcano unleashed destruction. Okay, we want to link on, so along with it came. And remember, it was Zeus doing all of this, so we're going to bring him in. Again, this is personal choice. I might be sitting there thinking, absolutely not. I'm not going to do that in my writing. This is fine. Um, along with it came Zeus's wrath. So, like I said, we want our vocabulary in there. Your extended metaphor is continued because we're talking about Pandora's box and using that teal to kind of describe the volcano metaphorically. Okay? So, along with it came Zeus's wrath. We're going to bring in what that wrath involves. Now, again, I gave you vocabulary. So, punishment. We're going to use a triple here. Death. Suffering. I've used three as a, as a triple there. Okay, you might not like to do that, but again, it's just structure. So, think about what the examiner's doing there. Right, okay. So far, we've built up something quite decent. It's not over the top, and it's not too difficult, I don't think. But again, let me know in the comments if you think, do you know what? Absolutely no, pet. This is right over my head. And then again, what we're going to get, guys, if you watch, is our next paragraphs. 
It's going to tell you what we're going to include in our next paragraph so, so that you're not sitting there thinking, e nah, I've started with the gods, I've got nowhere to go. What on earth am I going to write? You're going to write about punishment. You can write about death, you can write about suffering, or you can go more with curiosity and deception, or you can go more with Zeus. What we don't need to do is say, oh, there's a brown volcano, we're rotting over there in the distance, okay? So we'll have to run away. Um, so our next section, okay? I mentioned the triple abstract noun and the colon. If you can't do that, do the triple adjectives, but that's going to come next, all right? So we'll just use the ones I already gave you so you don't have to think. Isolation, um, desolation. Um, I'm going to put ignorance this time. So I'm describing man, okay? Then our colon comes in. So again, think about your examiner there. There's your colon. And what, what comes after that? Once again, I'm going to bring in mankind now. Once again, mankind had defied the rules of the divine. If you can't use divine, use gods. So again, we're building in our extended metaphor. So we start with Pandora. Zeus is angry at us. This is what he's going to do because we have defied the rules. So the extended metaphor continues. Yeah, I hope this is helping. I hope so far, in my personal opinion, our opening paragraph's pretty good. Again, imagine that, that piece of writing, and the examiner comes across it and thinks, do you know what, this is a different way to describe that volcano. Fantastic. Okay, we're going to go again. Some of you might decide, again, depending on your grading and what you're doing with your writing and what you're practicing, some of you might decide to put your single word here. Okay, now... Because we've mentioned curiosity, deception, and hope with Pandora, we might pick one of them. Hope might be a decent one because then what we can do later on in our writing is absolutely ruin the hope and say, you know, hope had been trapped inside the box for eternity. And you've got that horrendous notion of actually we can't be saved from ourselves here. Um, so let's do that. Okay, hope's going to be our single word. And then we're going to, again, structural. Either you can carry on there or you might leave that on its completely isolated and go here for your second section. Yeah, again, structural choice really and tidy up for you what you're going to do. But that's a good word to bring back in. If you are somebody who writes really quickly and is already thinking about the end, the ending, then obviously you're going to need a cyclical link to that. So the opening of Pandora's box, um, the volcano had unleashed destruction. That it's going to have to be some sort of juxtaposition or mirror image at the end of the writing. Um, so, so we're back to our work. So we've mentioned hope. Mankind has defied the rules. Okay. Now, again, we want to bring in something that links our extended metaphor. Now, you won't be daft. You might be thinking, right, I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go that way. It's, again, it's entirely up to you. I'm going to go with this one just because I've told you that punishing man is something that has lasted since since the, the opening of the Bible, hasn't it? So I'll just come here. This is, I'm going to put a rhetorical question. However, however, I would, again, some, some English teachers might not like this. I think if you are a grade eight or nine, we just don't need the rhetorical question. And, and again, I don't mean offence here. It's too simple. I'm going to put it there just for those students that are watching that are a grade four or five. So we might put something like, would humanity ever learn? Yeah, now what we can do, if we are trying to be creative with that, is answer it, no. Yeah? Okay, and then we're back in. This constant punishment or sanction would lead to doomsday. So again, now we're talking, or you can just put doom if you want. Um, now we're talking about the end of the world. So our extended metaphor again has developed, and now we've got our subtle biblical link. Our sort of biblical link I was mentioning earlier is there because doomsday, okay, look what the examiner might do here. Doomsday is the end of the world. If you're doing a Christmas carol, it's written across um, ignorance of one's head, isn't it? We're told about doom. So again, now we are talking about how the world is being destroyed because Pandora can't just keep her mitts to herself and not open the box. Much like Eve can't not eat the apple. Okay, now, um, Again, we're going to ask ourselves well, what we're going to do and where we're going to go now. And that's always the big question. Students always think, like, well, where do, I, where do I do? Where do I go? I haven't got a very good idea. So we've mentioned, would humanity ever learn? No, this constant punishment would lead to doomsday. Now, what we can do is put yes. I love that word. And that's just personal preference because for me, it like reaffirms what we're seeing. So what we could do here for being quite clever is talk about defiance. Now, we can talk about defiance in terms of 
listing people who have been defiant because that's going to give us Eva, that's um, going to give us a couple of other people like Icarus. But you can just talk about defiance as a metaphor if you can do it. So, um, yes, defiance had become the prologue. So, again, we get our metaphor in there to many lives. So, think. If you're thinking what on earth one of them, the prologue obviously is the introduction to something, the introduction to a book. So now we're talking about how defiance has started everything, and it has. Um, and that's why, again, I love going with the gods because of what mankind does. So yes, defiance had become the the, uh, the prologue to many lives. And then what we can do, we have our dash here for vocab, and we can do Eve, and we can do Icarus. We can do, I don't know, we can do Delilah. There's plenty of people you can choose in the Bible that have defied the powers that be. Um, you could even do Judas Iscariot there if you wanted to, because he's, he's a pretty decent one to include. Um, anyway, my point is, it starts to develop at a level, I hope you can see, that isn't a literal description of what is in front of you. Because the literal description of what is in front of you, give or take a couple of students, is limited. Because... Um, like I've said, the best will in the world, if we're going pure literal, is that we describe what we see and there is absolute limitation there. When we start going metaphorically and we go beyond the image or we pick something within the image and we take that, then then actually we open up an absolute field of, of ideas. We can go down almost any avenue. Of course, it doesn't have to be Greek myth. You know, don't think I'm ignorant. You will have read things yourself that you can steal. So my next point is this. Um, students can or you can steal um, ideas from the things that you are currently reading. So um, if you are doing the power and conflict poems, um, exposure starts with our brains ache. You can lift that. Now, careful. I don't mean you're going to write our brains ache, but you can mirror it. Yeah, you can mirror that line and just drop it, just drop out a word and sub it in. Because then again, what we're going to do is we're going to use the things we've been reading especially if you are someone who doesn't read. If you are someone who doesn't have access to texts or hasn't got access to the internet or um, can't concentrate for whatever, re whatever reason, and I'm rubbish at concentrating, my work colleagues will tell you that, but if you need ideas, that is a quick win. Now, you just need to not rewrite the poem because that's stupidity. But, you know, we've got things like the team cut that turns savage in Storm on the Island. You can lift that. Yes, and you can talk about the, the, tame, the tamed human who had turned barbaric. And it just lifts the sentence, still an idea, um, but you just kind of alter it to, to, to suit yourself, if you like. Um, what I would urge you to do, guys, is go away. If we're going to do a volcano, attempt it. Or just Google something. There's images all over, all over the place. Look outside. Try a description. Try one, two paragraphs. Yeah, just to keep you going. If you're going to use some of the tips that I've given you, absolutely send them to me. I'll have a look. Um, Send it to your English teacher and just make a note and say, this is just a, a risk I'm going to take. Has it worked? You can also scroll through my Instagram and see all of the different paragraphs I've written because there's quite a lot there. I've used um, Atonement, I've used X-Men, I've used Alien and Predator, which was a request. So if you do have a request for something that you want me to describe, of course, I can knock that up for you. Um, the other thing um, I'll say is, yeah, it's hard to be creative. It is, but, but you have to be. So whichever way you look at it, you need an idea and stealing other people's ideas is decent as long as you kind of mirror it to suit yourself thursday at 11 30 i'll be doing an inspector calls so again let your pals know if that's of any use to you um and please stay in touch on instagram and i hope it's going well um if anybody's feeling down during this lockdown reach out do you know what i mean do something that you like go for a walk all of those things your teachers are there for you um i would say that they're missing you as well thank you so much for joining in i hope this was useful and i shall catch you on thursday 11 30 and sweater calls thank you guys